I recognize the fact that as I stand here tonight, I stand before you with mixed emotions. Being conscious of the fact that this being the last night of this series, and yet there are those who have been here every night who have just walked away as if nothing is happening. My grandmother, the old folks used to sing an old hymn, it's getting late in the evening. <laughs> Sun is almost down. You know, when you look, look at faces that the sun of life is almost down and they just turn away and fail to obey the Lord. But I trust that you will not allow this meeting to close and leave you on the outside of the ark of safety. Represent to my lesson for this evening I want to again express my gratitude and appreciation to Brother Grover C. Washington and the committee who heads this campaign each year for inviting me to come and to work with you this week. As I said on Sunday evening, I recognize that you have some of the greatest preachers in the Brotherhood right here in the Dallas area. And I recognize also the fact that you could have selected one of them. And I appreciate the opportunity of working and serving with you. And I appreciate every act of kindness which has been manifest toward the wife and myself while here in your fair city. The provision you made for us to be comfortable while here and those who have invited us out uh, this week and there were others about four invited us out today and we could only go for one but maybe next time we'll be back in the area and we'll be able to fulfill some of those appointments. Those of you who are visiting with us this evening who are not members of the body of Christ I trust that you will study carefully with me this evening in the fear of the judgment recognizing the fact that one day we are going to leave here. We are going to die. It wouldn't be so bad if everything ended at death, but it doesn't. The Bible say after this cometh the judgment. And standing before God in the judgment is going to be an individual affair. No one will be able to stand for you, but you must stand for yourself. And when you stand before God in the judgment, you will not be judged by what you thought. You will not be judged by your feelings. Neither will you be judged by what you've learned over the years from your parents or four parents by way of human tradition. But the only thing will matter in the judgment is whether or not the things you've obeyed can be found in God's book, the Bible. Because Jesus says in John 12 and verse 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. He said the words I spoke of the same will judge him in the last day. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 12 John exiled on the Isle of Patmos. John says, I saw the dead. Small and great stand before God, yes, and the books were open. Yes, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books Amen. according to their words. This lets us know the Bible is going to read the same in the judgment, and it should encourage every truth-loving person, every person desires for pleasing God, and living with God in heaven beyond this veil of tears to take the Bible and begin to read the Bible carefully for yourselves to find out whether or not you've done those things pleasing to God. And if not, you ought to do so now before time proves everlastingly and eternally too late. In the 12th chapter of the book of Revelations, and we're going to begin reading with verse number 7. And there was war in heaven, Michael 
and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found in the moor in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The subject tonight, Satan, the world's greatest counterfeiter. Satan, the world's greatest counterfeiter. I believe they call the, uh, the counterfeiters in society, they call them paper hangers. <laughs> I think that's what they call them. And they say if that fellow's able to pass off a million dollars, he was a good paper hanger. But even though he passed off several billions of dollars, he's not as bad as Satan. Do you not know that Satan causes men and women, boys and girls, to lose their souls? And many people think that the devil is their friend. But the devil is your friend. The devil wants you lost. He's our adversary. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, he says, be so vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour. Yes, Have you ever noticed the characteristic of a lion? That lion will hide behind something as that prey approaches, and he, he can't run, very, run fast very long. He will launch out, and if it's a deer or something, if he misses it the first time, he may sull and pout for a little while, but he knows there'll be another chance. Yes. And the next time we let him get a little, a little closer in. So that devil may not get to that first time, but he doesn't give up. Yes, sir. That devil is your enemy. Yes, and do you not know that man was God's prized creation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was given dominion over everything the Lord God had made. Yes, sir. God even provided a wife for him and a home in the paradise of Eden. No soon and God had provided all these things from them for them, the old devil entered in. Amen. A lot of people, you know, when I was just a kid, my grandmother had a religious book. And that book pictured the devil as real ugly with horns on his head and a pitchfork in his head and a long tail. Well, I'll tell you one thing, if the devil actually looked like that, I don't know if of any of us who'd ever catch. That devil appears in many forms. In the Garden of Eden, he appeared in the form of a serpent. But many times the devil appears in Botany 500, Hart, Shapton, Marks, and Stutson, and Stacey Adams. Many times the devil appears with red lips and high heels. And one thing about that devil, that devil knows how to magnify things. Do you not know that the devil approached Eve and tried to cast doubt in the master what God had said? He's not happy, not God said. Actually what he was saying was, God have unduly restricted you and tell you there's a tree out there that you can't eat. She said, yes, she said, of every tree we may freely eat except one. He said, God doth know that in the day that thou eateth thereof, thou shalt be as God's, small g, yeah. God's knowing both good and evil. And the Bible say that she looked upon it. Yes, now, nowhere does the Bible say that she looked at that tree. Now, she knew that tree was out there. But the Bible nowhere showed that she'd ever paid any attention to that devil brought it to her attention. And that devil magnified that old tree. You know, that devil, I'll tell you what he'll do. That devil will magnify a thing and make you take the second look. So I hadn't noticed too close. That that's right, dude. He'll make you take the second look. And the Bible said it was good to look upon. It was good for food and desire for making one wise. And she ate and gave it to Adam, and he ate also. Yes, sir. As the results of this sin, a transgression, they were driven out 
of that beautiful home without hope. But God still loved man. Yeah. And thus God said in Genesis 3 and verse 15, I put enmity between thee and the woman, yeah. between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise it. This was the first promise that God was going to send his son to die on the cross Amen. and shed his blood that man might regain that which he lost back in the Garden of Eden. Yes, and everything that God used in the scheme of redemption, that Satan, or that devil, Satan, have been smart enough to duplicate and use the same thing in such a way to give man a false sense of security. There are a lot of folk tonight who were religiously inclined and they made up their mind to serve God and they went out and received the wrong information and thus they think that they are saved and you can't tell them anything. It blinded them to the idea of making a part of the investigation to find out whether or not a thing is right or wrong. Right. Yes. Give people a false sense of, I want to prove tonight within the next few minutes that everything God have ever used, that that devil used the same thing. He doesn't get something different, but the same thing. As men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, Man, I'm not very long followed after God's pattern, and thus God sent the prophet. Yes, sir. But do you not know that Satan selected prophets too? Oh, yes, sir. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 yeah. and verse 1 into God who had sundry time, and in divers manner spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Yes. Now, we notice that when the prophets spake, it was God Almighty yes, in Jeremiah chapter 23 yes, and verse number 25. Hold Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 14. I want to show you something here. The Bible shows in Jeremiah chapter 23 and the verse is number 25. God said, I've heard what the prophet said. What the prophet said. The lies in my name. Notice now, the devil selected prophets. He sent them out in the Lord's name with a lie. Yes, sir. How many folk you think the devil could deceive if he shows up? I'm here in the devil's name. Oh, he shows up in the Lord's name with a lie. I've heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Dream. How, How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet, that prophesy lies? Prophet, lie. Yea, they are prophets yea, of, the sheep, prophet of the sheep of their own heart, their own heart which caused my people to forget, to forget my name, my name by that dream, dream, which they, shall which they every tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have as forgotten, their fathers my forgotten my name for Baal. Now notice now, to save some time now, let's find out whether or not God sent them. They went out in the Lord's name, but go back to verse 21, Brother Doolin. God said, I am not, I am not, sent these prophets yeah. and yet they ran. Yes. I have not spoken to them and yeah. yet they prophesied. Now God said he didn't send them. Right. And yet they went out in the Lord's name. Yes, sir. Now if God didn't send them, who did? Yes, all right. Yes, all right. Oh, I believe you see that. Yes, you just too intelligent to tell me you can't see that. But if they stood in my counsel yes, and, it called and called my people to hear my word, then they should have turned, they should have turned them from the their evil, evil ways and from, evil and from the evil of their doing. You know, people say, Brother Evans, you know, if our leaders lead us wrong, God's going to hold them accountable. But now he's going to excuse. No, he isn't either. No, sir. Isaiah 9, 13. If you have it, let's the read it. The people are new. Unto him that smited them, neither do they seek, neither the, Lord do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off, the Lord will cut off Israel 
head and tail, branch and rush in one day. He said the ancient and honorable, he's the head. And the proper that teacher lies, he's the tail. He said for who? The leaders of this people call them the error. And they that are led of them are destroyed. Not only the leaders, but the Bible says the leaders call them the heir, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Yes, sir. Matthew 15, 14, the Bible says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Well, we found out that the devil sent prophets. God sent his only son. Jesus Christ. All right, sir. But you know that devil sent some crisis. Yes, Matthew 24 and verse 23. Let me show you something. The Bible shows in John 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the devil sent out some crisis. Yes, All right, Matthew 24 and verse 23. Then if any man shall, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, are uh, there, believe it not. Believe it not. For, there shall arise For there shall arise false crises, plural. Yes, yes. Well, now, God sent the only true Christ, didn't he? Yes, sir. Well, now, if there are false crises, whose crises are they? You'll have to admit the devils. There shall arise false crises. Read, Brother Dude. And, and false prophets. And shall show and great signs and wonders. In so much, but possible, they should deceive the very elects. God sent prophets. Yes, sir. The devil sent prophets. Yes. God sent the only true Christ. The devil sent some Christes. Christ selected apostles, and the devil got him some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He got some ready today. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. You have people on radio and television, I'm apostle. They don't know the seal of apostleship. The seal of apostleship was they had to be with Christ from the baptism of John to the Satan. Paul was not with Christ from the baptism of John to the Satan. And he said, I, I was born as one born out of due seed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that was the seal of apostleship. Amen. But the devil selected him some apostles. Christ had the true apostle, and the devil selected him some. Yes, sir. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. For such are false, For apostles. Such are false apostles. apostles. Deceitful workers, Deceitful workers transforming, transforming themselves the into the apostles of Christ. And no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bible say, for such are false apostles. Yes, sir. Well, now Christ had the true apostles, didn't he? Now, if Christ had the true apostles, and these are false apostles, whose apostles are they? <laughs> You'll have to admit that they're the devil's apostles. Yes, yes. And the devil also got preachers. Yes, a lot of people think that every preacher that grabs a Bible and stick on his arm, God sent him. <laughs> God haven't sent all these fellas out. That's right. That's right. Talk, sir. He haven't sent them. Man, I heard a fellow say one time, he said, you know, I was looking up and I seen GPC and that meant go preach Christ. Well, I tell you, GPC can mean a whole lot of things. Yes, sir. I mean, go pick cotton, go plow corn. Could mean a whole lot of things. We're talking about GPC. And he's preaching everything but Christ. Do you not know that every one of us are called into God's services just alike? Yeah. We are called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then if you have a desire to preach God's word, you prepare yourself to do that job by studying. For Paul told Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God. Right, a workman need not be ashamed, but rightly uh, handling a right the way of truth. In 1 Timothy 4 and verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, yes, to exaltation and to doctrine. Yes, 
God haven't sent all these fellas. The devil got some preachers too. Read on, brother dude. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, Therefore, it is no great thing if it's what? His ministers. I told you God didn't send all these fellas. Yes. The Bible says no great thing if his minister, if his preachers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Hold it. Somebody said, well, how am I going to tell the devil's preacher? Well, the Bible says, if they stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my word, they would have turned them from the evil ways and from the evil of their doing. Yes, sir. Well, the first thing you want to tell the devil's preacher, he stick his finger to the belt and says, I'm reverend thus and so. <laughs> hmm? Yes, sir. Or even I'm right reverend. Right, right. <laughs> Friend, the word reverend is mentioned only one time in the 66 books of the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Psalms 111 and verse number 9, yes, the Bible say he sent redemption under his people. He hath commanded his cover forever, holy and reverend is his name. Is his name. Who was it said redemption? Turn to Job 32, 21. I'll be there in just a few moments. It was God in John 3, 16. Who was it commanded his come forever? In Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, the Bible said, Behold, the death come, saith the Lord God, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Amen. With my covenant they break, although I was a husband, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days I will write my commandment in the inward part and upon the tables of their heart. I will walk among them and be their God, and they shall be my people. Yes. It was God who commanded to come forever, and the Bible said, Holy and Reverend yes, is his name. Amen. The yes. people said, Brother David, we just given our preacher a title. Job 32, 21 and 22. Let me not, I pray, Let me not, I pray you, except any man's person. Neither let me give, Neither flat let me give flattering titles under man. Under man. For I know not, not to give flattering titles. In so doing, In so doing my, my makeup will soon take me away. Yes, I know not to give flattering titles. Yes, in so doing, my maker will soon take me away. We're not even to think of men above that which is written. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 6, and turn to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. I'll be there in just a moment. Let us know that in these things, brethren, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and the verse is number six. Let's see what the Bible says. And these things, things brethren, I have a figure transferred, my servant of Paul, for your sake, that you, might, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up one against the other. That's long calling. He said, but don't think of men above that which is written. Do you not know that the apostles had the keys of the kingdom, delegated authority? But you never heard of Reverend Matthew, Reverend Paul, Reverend John, Reverend Mark, Reverend Luke. You never heard of that. Hmm? And you know, most times we don't, we don't even say Mr. Christ, we just say Christ. Then call the preacher Reverend. Right. Hmm? Oh, sir. What was Paul called? Whatever Paul was called, I think it'd be good enough for us. Don't you think so? Yes, sir. Second Peter chapter three and verse number fifteen. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Right, Reverend Doctor Paul. Brother Paul. See that? Yes, sir. Even as our beloved brother Paul. Yes, sir. 
In Matthew 23, 8 and 9, the Bible say, ye all are brethren. Yes, sir. How am I going to tell the devil's preacher? He'll tell you, honey, ain't nothing in no name. Don't make no difference. So your name Harry and my name Tom, and we all work for the same God, and it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> That's what he'll tell you. But you have to go to the council. The council says in Ephesians 3, 14 and 15, And for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in the heaven and earth is named. Yes, right. Acts 4, 10 through 12, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom is crucified, God had raised from the dead, even by him that this man standing before you hold. He said, this is the stone set it not of a building, which become the head of the corner. He said, neither is there salvation in any help, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So any time a fella tell you that ain't nothing in no name, God didn't send that fella. Mm -mm. He didn't send him. That's the devil's preacher. And another thing will say, honey, go out and pray the sinner's prayer. If you want to be saved, just pray the sinner's prayer. No such thing as no sinner's prayer. Hmm? I said, there's no such thing as the sinner's prayer. In John 9 and verse 31, the Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Yes, sir. What? We know that God heareth not sinners. Yes, sir. How did those Jews know that? It's not that God can't hear them. So what God can do, he can do anything he chooses to do. Yes, but there's something which God chooses not to do. Yes, Amen. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, oh, neither is it happy that it cannot hear. He said, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sin, if it is faced from you, that he will not. Not that he cannot, but will not hear. Yes, so right. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 15, when you stretch forth your hand, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yeah. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Amen. In Proverbs 20 and verse 9, he that turned the ways up and hear the law, even his prayers have been an abomination under the law. Yes, if you fail to hear God's word and respond to God's word, the Bible says your prayers have been abomination to God. Amen. God never have authorized a sinner to pray for anything. And anything you tell me tonight that a sinner might pray for, I'll stand flat footed and give you book, chapter, and verse and prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that those things have been provided for. Right, That's right. Anything you tell me. Well, some say, well, brother, I prayed to God for converting power. Psalm 19, 7, the Bible said, the Lord, the Lord is perfect, yes, converting the soul. Right. Some will, I prayed for light and understanding. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 130, he said, the interest of thy word oh. giveth light and understanding to the simple. Amen. Some say, I prayed for God to forgive me of my sin. Well, I pray for it. When the Bible said, Acts 2 and verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the midst of sin. Some I pray for God's grace. Titus 2, 11 and 12, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we shall live godly sober and righteously in this prayer. I could just go on and on. Anything you tell me a sinner might pray for, those things been provided for. What you need to do is obey the gospel of Christ with a put in position where God will hear and answer your prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As I told you on last evening, if God heard and answered the sinner's prayer as well as his children, there would be no advantage becoming a child of God. Right. Brother Doolin over there have a son. And I'm sure that that boy have a key to your house. Is that right? Yeah. My wife got seven children. <laughs> Neither one of our children have a key to your house. Huh? Yeah. Not a one of our children have a key to your house. See, there are certain privileges that his son enjoys that my children will be deprived of. Amen. See, there are certain privileges God's children enjoy, which the alien or the sinners are deprived of. Amen. 
<laughs> I believe you can see that. That's yes. something up you can understand it in. Yes, so well, I can't quite see that. You know, that's almost like I heard a fellow one time who was a hobo. And we were real near a railroad track, and my grandmother fed a lot of hobos. But you don't find any hobos now. <laughs> that diesel is too hot. Yep. It comes in hot and it leaves the yard hot. You can't get on that thing. <laughs> Amen. You don't find any hobos now. But that old steam, it'll be beating up the track and getting nowhere. But this fellow was hungry. I hadn't eaten in a couple of days. He said, lady, say, if you just give me a good meal, I'll saw you some wood. Well, she fixed him a good meal and passed it. I usually pass it out on the porch and they'd eat. So this fellow ate. And when he got through, he knocked on the door to give the lady the plate. And uh, she said, there's the wood pile out there. He said, lady, I don't see no wood pile. <laughs> she said, there it is right there behind you. Yeah. He said, lady, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see no wood pile. Yeah. <laughs> so she turns as if she's going back into the house. And when she looked around, he was looking toward the wood pile. She said, oh, yes, I've seen you see it. He said, yes, ma'am, you may have seen me see it, but you ain't going to see me saw it. <laughs> I, I believe you can get that. You just too intent to tell me that you can't see that. <laughs> Amen. All right, that, that, de that devil's preacher will tell you, honey, just one drop of water is just as good as an ocean food. Yeah. Uh -huh. Huh? So you don't have to be baptized. Let me tell you something, friend. When you look at the word sprinkle, pour, and baptize, you're looking at three different words all together right. and having three different meanings. Right. You have that word right there, so which uh, means to scatter in small drops. Yes, sir. Well, the only way, now the Bible nowhere says handling the element, but handling the subject. So the only way to sprinkle a man is cut him in small pieces and scatter him in small drops. <laughs> and the word clover for pole means to let out in a stream. Well, the only way to let him out in the stream is to melt him in a vat and let him out in the stream. Yeah. But baptize is from the word baptizo mean to dip, to plunge, yes, to overwhelm, out of us. Yes, sir. I believe you can see that. Oh, yeah. And you cannot dip. Plunge, overwhelm, or immerse in a bowl. It takes water. And the Bible said that Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, and they both came up out of the water. Yes, sir. That's right. So it takes a going into water, baptizing water, and coming up out of water. So any time that preacher tell you that one drop is good as good as an ocean full, God didn't send that fella. That is the devil's preacher. All right, do not know that Jesus Christ came and shed his blood and purchased only one church. You know, but the devil got a whole slew of them. You know what the devil said? You know, some fellas say, I just don't believe in fighting. But you know, I never seen a muley head cow believe in hooking. <laughs> she didn't have anything to hook with. No horns. <laughs> so I don't believe in fighting all the time. He said, honey, you can go anywhere, but just stay away from the church of Christ. Yeah. You know why the devil tell you that? Because he knows that you can only be saved in the church for which Christ died. The devil knows that. You know what? You can change four or five different churches in town, but you obey the gospel of Christ that everybody in your, your head will say, honey, why did you go down there, honey? What you go down there for? That, that group of people, they, they think they're the only one to save. Well, the thing about it, if you've been guessing about it, you better know. The Bible says in 2 Peter, Chapter 1 and verse 10, make your calling and election sure. Yes, yes. If you've been guessing about it, you better make it sure. Right. Christ died for only one church, right. and he built only one. Amen. Somebody said, he built them all. Well, he didn't tell the truth. You believe you've been telling me Christ didn't tell the truth? Right. Yeah. He said, upon this rock, yes, sir. 
I will build my church. Then some of your brethren, we can't see the Bible just like. Brother, turn to Matthew 16, and let's start reading at verse number 13. I want to show you something. Now, if you see this different from the way I see it, then you hold up your hand. I want you to come down and explain it to us. When Jesus came, the coast of Caesarea Philippi, as the disciples saying, whom the men say that I the Son of Man am. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood had not revealed unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Whose Father? Whose Father? Christ's Father. Well, that's the same way I see that. Yes, sir. That my father meant Christ's father. Yes, sir. Now, now, if you see that different from the way I see it, hold up your hand. Uh, well, we all see that just like. So often you can't see it like. Well, we all see that just alike. Yes, sir. That my father meant Christ's father. Yes, sir. Have you noticed in the same connection now? Notice the next, keep reading, Brother Doolin. And I say also, and I say also unto thee, that thou art, that thou art Peter, upon rock, and upon this rock, my church. now they want to jump the track. Yeah, preacher. Now you understand that my father meant Christ's father. Yes, sir. He said, I will build my church. The usual, he didn't name it. <laughs> oh, I believe you see that. Brother Lee told me on last night, he said, Brother Evan, I, I'd like to meet your wife personally. So when he came, when we came in this evening, he was standing out there. I said, Brother Lee, this is my wife. I didn't have to say this is Sister Evan. He knew that if she was my wife and knowing my name, he knew who she was. Well, oh, I believe you see that. Jesus said, I will build my church. Singular, not plural, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We pointed out this a several nights ago. Maybe you here, you wasn't here at the time we pointed it out. That uh, we're not going to talk about a compound and complex sentence where you got to have independent and dependent clauses and all that, but we understand that in what we call a simple sentence, you have what is known as a simple subject and a simple predicate. That simple subject is the noun in the, in the sentence or the pronoun, the word that's used in the place of the noun which must agree with the noun for which it stands in gender, number, and person. I there represents the speaker Christ. Will build is what is known as the verb phrase, and the verb is the word which expresses action being a state of being. Yes, Church is the object in view, isn't it? Since my is used preceding the object in view, it ceases to be a personal pronoun and becomes a phenomenal adjective used in the possessive case, showing that whatever Christ promised to build belongs exclusively to him. No one else having any claims on it. It belongs exclusively to the builder, and Christ said, I will build my church. And the Lord had the same to the church he built. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And there are no saved on the outside of it. All right. Amen. Amen. Not a one. All right, we have a strange voice. Not there are saved folk in all churches if they are they're in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the wrong place. The Bible says place salvation in the body. And the body is the church. Yes, sir. Second Timothy chapter two and verse ten. Therefore, I do all things for the let's say that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. To be in Christ is to be in His body. Yes. Colossians chapter one and verse number eighteen. Yes. To be in His body is to be in His church because the church and the body they are one and the same. Amen. Colossians one twenty four. Who now rejoice in my suffering with you, put up the hind afflicts of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. That's what John was talking about. 
in Revelation 14, 13, yes. when he said, I heard a voice from heaven saying, unto me, right blessed are the dead which yes. die in the Lord. Now, who are those who are blessed and dead? Talk, who are those who are blessed and dead? Talk, those who die in the Lord. Yes, well, what about those who die out of the Lord? Yes. Are they promised blessedness and death also? Yes. I believe you see that. There's no blessing to promise to those who die out of the Lord. So to die in the Lord is to die in Christ. To die in Christ is to die in his body. To die in his body is to die in his church. So John is saying, blessed are the dead which die in Christ's church. Yeah. 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 They is the spirit. They shall rest from their labor and their work must follow them. Right. Let me tell you something. If one responsible person can live in this life, and please God and die and go to heaven who lives and dies on the outside of the church of Christ, then Christ died for nothing. God sacrificed his son for nothing and Christ died for nothing. If you can be saved in the other way, because the Bible says he purchased the church with his blood and he had the saved of the church he died and purchased with his blood. Now if you can be saved in the other place, then Christ died for naught. You cannot enjoy a friendly, enjoy a friendly relationship with God while remain on the outside of the church for which Christ died. All right. Amen. Some folks say, well, Brother Evan, you mean to tell me he, he, puts, he puts you in the... Oh, yes. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 18. Now, we found out that the church and the body, they're one and the same. Amen. Oh, yes, one and the same. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. For God, God set the members. Now hath God set the members. Every one of them. Every one of them. Is the body. What is the body? The church. The church. Yes, Bible says set them in the church as it please him. Amen. He set them in the church as it please him. Christ died for one church. Yes, sir. But the devil said, I've got all, anything you want. Yeah, right. Say, now, if I've got one that uh, if you uh, go and rob the bank, if you just make some restitution and come before a certain fella, that he can uh, pray those sins away. He serves as the mediator between God and man. Let me tell you something, friends. There isn't a single man living who can meet the criteria to serve as a mediator between God and man. Not a one living. Uh, not, that includes the Pope. Not a one living. First of all, in order to meet the criteria, you must not be a party to the difficulty. Man is a party. He is the one responsible for the separation of the alienation. He must know all the facts that brought about the separation of the alienation. Jesus Christ knows all the facts. And then the next, he must be able to stand yeah. on equal footing with both parties involved. Yeah. If that's superior, he must be able to stand on equal footing with the superior and stand on parallel with the inferior. Yeah. At one time, Jesus Christ was on equal footing with God. Yeah. Philippians chapter 2, the Bible yeah. said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, yeah. who being in the form of God, thought not wrong to be with God made him seven a reputation. Bible says took up on the farm of seven and became obedient even unto the death of the cross. Wherefore God about exalted him and given a name above every name. But he gave it up and condescended that he might stand on parallel with man. He must be equal related to both parties by blood and association. Jesus Christ, one hand, can reach up and say, God is my father. Reach down with the other hand and say, humanity is my mother. So Jesus Christ is the only one who can stand and on equal footing with both parties. He can he related to both parties by blood and association. He knows about all the facts brought about separation and is not a part of the difficulty. So Jesus Christ, the only one who can serve as a mediator between God and man. Yes, sir. I know you're right. Only one, Only one can meet the criteria. Yes, 
First Timothy 2, 5, the Bible says there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Only one. And finally, God gave one plan, but the devil have a whole lot of plans. The devil have a plan, say, just come and tear around the altar and say, Jesus, real fast, and get the Holy Ghost. There isn't a single line of Scripture in the Bible telling anybody to get the Holy Ghost. Not a one. They're trying to get something they were never told to get. Hmm? There are others who tell you to come and tear around all to come to the mourner's bench, some pray for pardon, get rid of tell the experience of grace. None of this can be found in the Bible, the Word of God. God have only one plan, and that plan is that you must hear His Word. Yes, Acts 15 and verse 7, Jesus said in John 6 and verse 44, He said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. I will raise him up in the last day. But in verse 45, it said, written in the prophet, they shall all be taught of God. Yeah. Every man that would have heard and learned of the Father cometh unto me. So here is the first step in coming to Christ. Then you must believe, and this faith come by hearing, and the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 5, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And this one faith is produced by hearing and not by praying. Hebrew 11 and 6, the Bible said, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is in the reward of them that don't seek him. Lady said one time, I knew that you'd get to seeking him after a while. But the Bible said, Isaiah 34 and verse 16, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, for none of these things shall fail. John 5 and verse 39, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify me. Romans 10, 17, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Then you must turn from everything that's contrary to God's will. In Luke 13, 3 and verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, yes. as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, but not when it disappears, but that all should come to repentance. Then you must confess your faith in Christ to be the Son of God in Matthew 10 and verse 32, Romans 10 and verse 10, oh. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. And then, my friend, you must be buried with the Lord in water baptism yes. and that for the forgiveness of all of your past sins. Yes. In baptism, your sin, they are washed away. Acts 22 and verse 16, baptism is the only act which will change your state our relationship in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26 and 27. It is in baptism that you come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleans of all your sin in Romans 6, 3 and verse 4. And the Lord will answer to the church when you think this evening of the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made, but acts so little of us. He was willing to give up his home in heaven, came down to this earth, suffered, bled, and died on the tree of the cross, resurrected from the grave the third day, and thus declared that all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way, even under the new world. We think that Christ suffered so much for us, but just act so little of us in obedience to his will. Are you willing to obey him this evening? You've heard his word. You can sit right there and believe the same with all of your heart. Sit right there, make up your mind. You're going to turn from everything that's contrary to God's will. Then walk down the aisle, confess that Jesus Christ is God's Son, and then be buried with the Lord in baptism. He'll add you to his church. Amen. And if you remain faithful, heaven will be yours to enjoy. And after a while, if such be your decision to obey the Lord right now, while together stand and sing, why not come right now? Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you are equal of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power. 
The Lord is standing right now. He's pleading right now. He's saying, can we all that labor have a And I'll give it a rest. Take my yoke upon and let me find meek and load and hard. Ye shall find rest your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden light. Let us make just one more appeal before you sing the next verse of this song. I'm just persuaded to believe that there are honest souls in this audience tonight who are just almost persuaded to obey the Lord. But being almost persuaded isn't enough. Agrippa said to Paul, almost thou persuadeth me to be a Christian, but the record nowhere shows he ever obeyed the Lord. Paul reasoned with old Felix about self-control and the judgment to come, and the Bible said, tremble, and said, go your way to more convenient season, I'll send for you. But the record nowhere shows he ever found that more convenient season. This may be the last opportunity you'll ever have to make things right with God. There's a possibility that God spared your life just for this moment to make things right tonight. Do you not know that hell is going to be full of folk with good intentions? Well, I heard and I planned to, but just never gotten around to it. Friend, you need to obey the Lord tonight. We're going to sing the next verse of this song. Why not come right now? Those brethren out there to encourage to walk with you. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to camp for each time. There's a wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, power working power. Thank you. 